Hey folks, Steve here with a video regarding, well, I don't know what you'd call this. This is just a fun hobby video uh, that I wanted to cover because earlier today I was doing um, some fall yard work and to help make the menial task go by quicker I had put on a podcast and um, I will put the link to this podcast down in the description below. Um, I listen to it on the Google Podcast app uh, on my phone, so I had headphones and was listening to that while I worked. And uh, I'll firstly say, um, you know, I think these guys who run Three Moves Ahead, which is the, na the name of the podcast, do a really good job. Uh, they have a nice production here together uh, that covers um, a lot of different games, some PC games, video games, uh, but also gets into war games and... Uh, uh, yeah, strategy games, war games, all that good stuff. And I'm making this video sort of as a really late response to the episode they did, episode 439 on Cataclysm, A Second World War. This is back in July 23rd of 2018, which, you know, <laughs> we're in October 2019, so I'm way past uh, the time frame where it would be normal to respond to this for fun. Um, but I gave it a listen, and it just sparked a lot of thoughts that I had around um, Cataclysm, Triumph and Tragedy, and block games in general. And just for fun, before the weekend ended, I wanted to record a quick video on the subject and uh, get it up on the channel. Um, just to have something fun for people to listen to or, or watch over the week until I can get more videos out and more free time. So... Um, uh, the, you, I'm not sure if it's better to watch uh, this video or listen to this episode of the podcast or vice versa. I'll leave that uh, to you to decide. I'm going to spoil their podcast episode a little bit, but it um, won't be that big of a deal. So uh, in this episode, um, Rob and Dr. Bruce, uh, Garrick, uh, talk about GMT Games' Cataclysm, A Second World War. Um, and in the process of that, they also compare it um, to GMT's Triumph and Tragedy, which is another game that fills, I guess, a very similar um, use case, maybe it would be said, for um, a higher level strategic game that is a sandbox of sorts for World War II or a potential uh, World War II. Now, um, in their sort of review and, and discussion of Cataclysm, uh, they were basically saying there were things they liked about it, there were things that they didn't like about it, and, and a lot of the time they were making comparisons to Triumph and Tragedy, and, and some of what they said um, really kind of confused me, uh, or, or I just basically wholly disagree with some of their points. Um, some of those points, uh, I think, speak to how they perceive the game and how they perceive Triumph and Tragedy, but I, I think the perspective just seems very strange from, from the perspective I've had in playing similar games. I have Triumph and Tragedy, I like Triumph and Tragedy, and I have Cataclysm, and I like Cataclysm. Um, now, they're different games that do similar things, but they also do different things. And some of what they spoke to in this podcast episode I don't think rang very true to me. And, and I'll, I guess, speak to what I mean. So I'm going to use the Board Game Geek pages for these games just to talk to them. Um, I could pull up Vassal, but uh, it's, I'm trying to make this as quick as I can so I can get back to doing some other stuff before the end of the weekend. Um, so here, here's the thing, right? Uh, Cataclysm is a, a Second World War out of the gate saying things are going to go off the rails of history, but it covers the... Uh, European theater, and it covers the Pacific theater, and it does so at a very, very high level, um, in such a high level, right, that you're looking and you're saying, well, France is one, two, three, four areas, Germany's similarly like five areas with East Prussia, and um, the one thing I'll say about the game is that it strives to provide a 
flurry of diplomatic activity um, as things ramp up for World War II, right? That's sort of what it's all about. But probably what's most, I think, unique about it, and maybe it sits along some other games as well, but it is truly strategic in scope. It is strategic in, in all ways because uh, there are games that are strategic World War II games, but they're like grand strategic. And, and someday I'm going to do a video talking through all these definitions and hope that they all make sense. But basically, like World in Flames is a grand strategic World War II game that takes hours and hours to play. Why does it take hours and hours to play? Well, it's dealing with things at the strategic level, but in a lot of detail. And then in addition to that, um, hopefully my voice doesn't give out as I record this video. In addition to that, it covers military matters on an operational scale. Sort of this weird blurry line between like high level operational and operational, but it, it you know, you're, you're attacking Russia um, across dozens of hexes and there's a lot of, you know, concern around the movement of armies. That's operational. Your, your movement of armies, your dealings with supply at a very, um, you know, unit by unit perspective uh, is operational. So there are a lot of games that are like that, whether it's um, Totalakrieg or, or A World at War, where uh, it's strategic, but there's a there's a big operational model strapped to that game. Well, in Cataclysm, this is a strategic game and a strategic game really only because the the forces you have on the board are basically army level. Uh, your your air units are air forces. Your uh, ship units are n n uh, naval fleets. Everything is such at a high level. And Poland <laughs> is one space, right? I mean, you're just you're operating at a very different level. And and what I think I disagreed with from the three moves ahead podcast was that um, there there was something one of the guys said about the actions you take at the military level don't feel strategic. I don't know what he meant by that. Um, if he means like strategy as in like player agency decision making, uh, but in the term of like what's the scope of the game, the, the warfare in this game is, is just that. It's strat strategic level. It's strategic level. Um, one of the, the guys on there was talking about how it didn't seem like the combat system uh, didn't reflect World War II, or it didn't feel very thematic to World War II. And I guess I could see where that opinion came from if you're very much used to operational level strategic games only, right? Like, I'll say um, Cataclysm, you know, it's very different from WIF, for instance, because, you know, invading France and conquering France might be able to be completed in the space of 30 minutes where, you know, it's a multi-hour affair to, to knock France out in WIF just because that game's a bigger game. Um, where I think Cataclysm does a good job portraying the strategic level considerations of World War II warfare is, I think, spot on. And, I, and I'm just not sure if the guys from the podcast, um, I, I just don't know if they're confusing operational feels of games. And this game doesn't want to be operational at all. It, it really it gets out of that entirely and just provides a strategic level um, th sort of a theater of gameplay. Because when it comes to World War II, it, it basically boils down to, like, you can look at each and every campaign of World War II, and it basically boils down to um, armor really matters. Uh, logistics can be a challenge. Aircraft carriers are better than battleships. And strategic bombing is useful. And uh, that's kind of like it. If you're really zooming out for a second... Yes, there's a whole lot more. There's a whole lot of units. There are artillery uh, factors. There are, you know, all these other things. But if you're trying to, like, zoom out and say, like, what does World War II do that is different than, say, a World War I game or a Napoleonic War game or something like that, 
how how could you illustrate that at a at a game this high up? Um, and in what we you would do, which is what this game does, is it puts incentives to have those things, right? It is better to have air superiority. It is better to have um, armor than no armor. Um, armor is not effective in certain types of terrain, right? And with uh, you can't use the blitz table in certain terrain. In Cataclysm, um, armor units provide no bonus in rough terrain, which uh, on the map, all the rough terrain is basically where there's a lot of mountains and basically areas where tanks cannot be doing blitz maneuver warfare or anything like that. And so I I just kind of, I guess I just disagree with their premise that the, the combat doesn't feel like World War II. I think there's a certain level of, um, yeah, it doesn't allow you to zoom in and, and conduct a, a maneuver uh, operational combat situation, right? You're, you're not surrounding Warsaw and Poland in this game, but you are looking to apply armored forces. You are looking to get air superiority and the Germans are going to win, right? That That's basically what's going to happen uh, when you play the game, and, and it works out that way. I mean, it's, you know, it, it plays pretty historically, all things considered, even with its sandbox nature. Um, so so I guess that, that part kind of weirded me out with, with how they were seeing the game. For sure, there are issues, I think, or criticism you could make of the game, um, but I just don't think a lot of what they had brought up in that video made sense to me, or at least I just I just didn't agree with where they were coming at it, but they really only played the full game once, it sounded like, and, and maybe some things just didn't stick. What really was interesting to me was that they kept calling back to Triumph and Tragedy as a better game, or, or a game that does things a little bit better, and the thing that really shocked me was when they said that Triumph and Tragedy combat or warfare feels more like World War II. I don't think that's true at all. And I'm I'm willing to get into it on the subject. At some point, I really would have wanted to make a video that compares, like Triumph and Tragedy to Cataclysm to Blitz with Blitz, to figure out you know what's the right you know World War II grand strategic or, or strategic level game for you, right? Um, I don't know if I'll ever get to that video, but it would be interesting. So so Triumph and Tragedy is a good game. I mean I like I like it. Um, now here's the thing with Triumph and Tragedy. Uh, it's got some things in common, right? If you look at the way the map is structured, it is similar to the map for uh, Cataclysm for, for Europe. Now they give a lot more spaces to Turkey for some reason. Uh, France is one, two, three, four spaces as well. Germany is only one, two, three, four. Um, Britain looks like it's two spaces, but there are, I think, if I zoom in for a second, maybe I zoomed in too much here. The thing with Triumph and Tragedy is, it, it is a good game. It's a fun game. It's a fun three-player game. Um, you can have late break breakouts of a World War II. It could be allies versus Soviets and so on. Um, just like Cataclysm, right? That That's possible. And in fact, I'd even say Triumph and Tragedy incentivizes a allies versus the USSR more than Cataclysm does. Um, I, I think by the nature of the game, like the allies really have to fight the Axis in Cataclysm, which is a little more historical. Where Triumph and Tragedy, I don't think that's necessarily true. And in fact, I can see things in Triumph and Tragedy going just way, way, way off base for histor historicity. Um, but when it comes to combat, uh, let's see if I can find the right chart. I think it's down here. So so here's the thing. This, this is what bugs me about Triumph and Tragedy, even though it's a great game. I, I like the game. I do. It's got this combat system. And spoilers, this is the block combat system. And you might know what I'm talking about if you're familiar with the game, so I'm going to get into this. So, if you look at this, you see there is a 
Fortress, line, air force line, carrier line, sub, fleet, tank, infantry, convoy. Uh, they have movement speeds. Okay, no big deal. And then they've got this combat chart. And basically each number here, you know, fortress against naval, fortress against ground, fortress against, um, what's S? Ships? Can't recall. Subs? No, probably ships, right? Um, basically, you, you roll a D6, you roll for as many steps on the block, right? Here's an example of a fortress. It, it, if I read this the right way, it has three steps. So it's going to roll uh, three dice. And basically, uh, depending on what those dice are compared to these numbers here and what they're attacking, you're going to cause that many number of hits to the enemy. Now, uh, I will say Triumph and Tragedy provides, you know, a system of rules that provide for submarines to do submarine things, for carriers to do carrier things. Um, the units broadly act like you would expect them to act. But here's the thing, and this is what I, I don't understand about what the podcast guys were saying. They said this felt more like World War II combat, and I just don't, I just don't see that to be true. Largely because uh, the tanks don't have much to different, differentiate them from infantry other than they roll before infantry. Um, this is the order, by the way. So if in a combat, fortresses roll before air force, which roll before carriers, bop, 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 bop. So tanks roll before infantry, but they only hit on twos or less or something like that. And infantry only hit on, if you're doing ground combat, three or less. Technically, infantry can hit more often, but tanks get to hit first, um, which might mean that the units are beaten up and can't attack your infantry as well. I, I don't think that's especially World War II, and I'll explain why. This, uh, this arbitrary order, which I get there's some logic here, right? There's a certain logic as to why certain forces roll before others, but, but it's a system that has existed in a bunch of other games that have nothing to do with World War II, and it's exactly the same in all those other games. So Triumph and Tragedy was designed by Craig Besink. Besink? I don't know. Um, and he's he's designed East Front, Euro Front, uh, Helene's, which is another block game. He's basically designed a bunch of block games, right? Um, and a lot of those other block games get published through Columbia Games, which, I mean, kudos to them, right? I'm not going to harsh on a game publisher other than to say that, at least when it comes to Columbia games, and in fact, most block games that I've ever played, I don't own any besides Triumph and Tragedy for this reason. Not counting commands and colors, that doesn't count because it's a different system. Um, you can kind of see an example here. Here are units from, uh, I think this is Richard III, so a battle... Or I'm sorry, a, a game on the War of the Roses. You can see they have units here, right? Um, blocks. They have steps because that's what the blocks are useful for, right? You you rotate it to show how many steps are on the unit. And then it's got another code here. B2, B3. You see C1. And what that really means is, in the game system... A's fire before B's, who fire before C's. Which means an A unit is, in effect, the same as a, we'll say, a fortress unit. And a B unit is the same as a air force. That sort of relationship, where units attack before other units, and they have a varying degree of number after that letter that defines how often they hit. So you can imagine... If you're rolling a d6 and you need a 3 or less, that's a 50% chance of a hit. A 2 is um, whatever it is, like 26% or whatever. Uh, or I'm sorry, 33%. Woo! Yeah, I can math, I promise. So uh, this, the system's the same, right? And unfortunately, and this is why I, I just, I'm not, I'm not going to do block games, because I really don't do a lot of videos about games that I don't like. But all of these games, whether it's Richard III, Crusader Rex, Julius Caesar, um, are unfortunately, in my mind, just all too similar to be that enjoyable. 
Um, to be sure, the games of those that I've played are well-produced games. Um, they're good production value and everything like that. And there are rules in those games that try to make the game feel like the period that they're covering. But when it comes to the combat system, whether you're playing... Um, Crusader Rex, or Julius Caesar, or Richard III, or Triumph and Tragedy, the combat will be the same. You've got some units that are going to fire first, and you're going to roll that many dice through the number of steps, and you're going to see how many hits you get. And there's nothing really World War II-y about it, because that system is just transplanted from each one, and there's not that much to support it other than that. Like, I played Crusader Rex, which is a game about the Crusades, and it didn't feel like a Crusades game, honestly. It really didn't. It felt like I could apply an entirely different set of theme to that war game, and it could have been a completely different war game, and it wouldn't have been much to change. Again, I'm not trying to harsh on the system too much or harsh on Columbia Games or or the designer of Triumph and Tragedy, because, you know, hey, all war games share stuff in common. Hex and Counter might as well all be the same, right? I guess. I don't know. But to me, it, as it relates to, like, Cataclysm and Triumph and Tragedy and, like, World War II combat, it just doesn't, it, it just doesn't make sense to me um, that someone could consider Triumph and Tragedy warfare to feel more like World War II. It just doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. Um... And the, the larger scale stuff, like strategic bombing uh, and the Atlantic warfare and all that stuff, um, these games, Cataclysm and Triumph and Tragedy, really operate very similarly. There's not anything there that one does extraordinarily different than the other. So if they were looking at it from like a naval perspective, um, really not much different. So I, I think the focus was on ground combat, and I'm, I don't know. I'm just stating my case here. I, I do not think Triumph and Tragedy has a better World War II combat model. I think it's it's you know it's using a, a very vanilla tasting combat system. Um, it does fine for what it needs to do. It it you don't really want combat systems to be very very complicated for these types of games. That's why Cataclysm is pretty straightforward. That's why, really. Triumph and Tragedy is also pretty straightforward, all things considered. And I would even just say that, you know, the Cataclysm system is a bit faster. It, it makes sense within degrees, and you can play more quickly because of that. And of course, Cataclysm's nice because it does have the Pacific Theater. And honestly, the more I've played of the Pacific Theater, um, though only as a Pacific Theater-only game... I think it does a pretty good job. I, I, you know, all things considered, in the way that you have to look at the game system, um, it plays pretty authentically. Now, Triumph and Tragedy does not yet have a Pacific component. It's going to have a, a sister game that will come out. I forget the name, but like Consequences and something. I can't remember off the top of my head. I'm sure it's somewhere on this Board Game Geek page. It'll be C and C, so you'll have TNT and C and C. That game's going to be basically Triumph and Tragedy, but in the Pacific Theater. And then in theory, you could slap the two games together. And that's always sort of an interesting struggle to make that work. A lot of games have done that, and it doesn't always work great. Because really what you want to do, I think, is develop a game from the ground up with one, you know, at the same time. Everything's designed to work with itself, rather than... We're going to design these two different components and try to mash them together. That's why I think a World at War has problems sometimes, uh, because it was originally a Europe-only game as Advance of, or, yeah, Rise and Fall of the Third Reich, which became Advanced Third Reich, and then uh, it got the Empire of the Rising Sun for the Pacific, and then they, they slapped them together for a World at War. Uh, same thing with, like, this is going to be Triumph and Tragedy plus C and C, as opposed to, say, like Cataclysm, which was designed with both in mind, and World in Flames, which was designed with both in mind. So, yeah, I don't know. It's just, <laughs> I don't know if those guys who, who record that podcast will ever see this video. 
um, I would maybe even reach out to them at some point if I can and say, hey, guys, let's, let's talk about it. Um, but, no, I don't know. This is the only block game that I own, and it is a fun game, but it, it will probably continue to be the only block game that I own um, because that system is like once is enough for, for me. And as it relates to Cataclysm, I, I think of the of the criticisms that can exist for Cataclysm, and, and sure, there's going to be some there. There are things that rub people the wrong way. Um, I had a con game of Cataclysm that did not go great. I think there's stuff that could get people goofed up, but I think if you can get the right set of people together, Cataclysm's great, and I, I might even argue that it's it could be better than Triumph and Tragedy in a lot of ways because of what it allows you to do um, and, and the way that it models uh, different things, different facets of the war, I think are just a little bit better. I, I think it just makes a little bit more sense um, than some of what Triumph and Tragedy does. I think Triumph and Tragedy maybe works better as a World War One game, honestly. I'd, I'd like to see what that looks like. If you redid this as a World War One game, it might feel a lot better. But I, you know, it's tough to say. It, it's tough to say. Okay, well, I think that's all I want to talk about. Um, again, check these guys out. They have so many other episodes covering so many other games. Um, they're a joy to read. I, I do like, uh, they're, they're worth listening to if you're commuting or, you know, working out in the yard or doing whatever. Um, I need to watch, or <laughs> I need to listen to more of their episodes. I finished the Pericles episode recently. It's quite good. Pericles is a great game. Um, worth checking out. Uh, but, yeah, a lot of cool stuff here. Cataclysm, great game. Check it out. Triumph and Tragedy is a great game as well. Check it out. And who knows what will come in the future uh, when I get more time to review and demonstrate uh, more games. So, I don't know. Thanks for indulging my weird video at the end of the weekend. We'll catch you next time for hopefully more Dark Valley as we start Case Blue, Fall Blau with uh, turn 12. So, see you there, guys. Take care. Keep gaming.